Hello, uh, this is Mrs. Thomas, and I'm going to go over um, this PowerPoint with you today. Um, and there'll be a few questions for you to answer on the Edpuzzle. So um, we have uh, a new type of writing that we're going to talk about. Uh, descriptive writing is very much like narrative writing. Um, in many ways, it's some of the best part of narrative writing. Uh, focus in on just the skill of descriptive, uh, writing a good description. Okay, so I want you to, um, so descriptive writing, descriptive essays are a powerful way to communicate an experience you've had or illustrate a subject in which you have expertise. So you really want to create the experience or you really want to illustrate, create a picture, that's what illustrate is, creating a picture with your words. So look at this image, what do you see? Okay, this uh, picture was taken by Todd R. Darling, and it's one of his pictures in Home of the Grave. You can see all of his pictures. Um, so if you are going to write about this picture, what might you say? So this is one way you might be able to describe this photograph. So as I read about it, I want you to look at the picture. The photo shows a group of five gathered in the ruins of a building with, graf with a graffiti of numbers, letters, and words all over the walls. A middle-aged man wearing sunglasses is leaning on a nearby wall. He has a cigarette in his hand. A young man is sitting on a footstool padded with clothes with extended legs. He, in he stares intensely at an object held in his hands. An age-old woman is sitting across him holding a cigarette. A young woman standing close to the man walks over and watches him. A young man with tattooed hands is staring at the person sitting on the footstool and a man smoking a cigarette is sitting on an open wall in the building. So in the description of the picture, what are some things that they considered? Okay. All right. So what's the camp made of? How is it furnished? What do the fire pit on the left and the graffiti on the walls add to the impression of the building? So you have the fire pit here. You have the graffiti. What does that show you? What do the people in the photograph seem to be doing? If you were standing in this picture in the middle of this group, what would you hear? What would you smell? If you touched the walls, what textures might you feel? What do you think is the idea that Darling wanted to convey with his picture? Okay, so there's two purpose, two purposes of writing a description. Okay, the first one is to convey with feeling a personal writing. Another word that we're going to use is subjective. So you can write subjectively. That means with feeling. Um, the other reason to write is to write objectively. Okay, that means you write without any bias or without any emotion. So part one, the first type of writing, you want to have emotion. The second one you want to have without bias, without emotion. Okay, so when you write descriptively, there are um, four things to consider. So you want to consider your purpose in your audience. Okay, so what is your purpose? Do you want to convey an idea objectively? Is your audience students? Is your audience a scientific group? Or is your purpose to show an experience and to reveal emotion and who's your audience. So thinking about who your audience is, you got to think about why you're writing. Okay. And then let's say you were writing about um, something that happened downtown last night. So you were in downtown Radcliffe. Or let's, let's change it. If you were in downtown Louisville and you wanted to talk about something that happened last night. Well, if you're writing to other people who are very familiar with downtown Louisville, um, then you wouldn't need to spend a lot of time giving details of where you were. You could just say, I was down near Mudcat Charlie's or I was near Actors Theater. Okay. However, if you were writing for a bunch of readers who were not familiar with Louisville, then you would need to give some details. Um, downtown Louisville is next to the Ohio River. 
Um, so you need to be uh, give give your audience that you're writing to the information they need to understand your description. Okay, and you need to know what you're what you're going to accomplish. Okay, um, your point of view is your physical stance. So you're physically looking at what you're describing. Okay, so um, when you're when you're writing descriptively, it's a good idea to, like we had here above, to actually look at the image. And I'm going to be asking you to write based on the image that you're going to share with me. So where, what is your perspective? Where are you physically? Um, so I'm not talking about first or second or third person point of view. I'm talking about literally where you're standing. If you were holding up a camera, where, where are you looking? Okay. And then that would also create your organization. So if you are talking about this picture, um, are you going to organize it from the outside of this shelter looking in? Are you going to organize it? Are you going to talk about what happened um, from the left side of the picture to the right side of the picture, from the background of the picture to the foreground of the picture? How are you going to describe your image? All right, um, a dominant impression. So what is the dominant impression that you want to create for your reader? That sort of, that is sort of like the thesis. So what is your main idea that you want to make? Um, if you're writing uh, objectively, then it's a good idea to just come out and say why you're writing, okay? Um, if you're writing subjectively, you might not need to state, I want you to know that it was scary or I want you to know that it was sad. As you describe it, you can reveal your feelings and your emotions. You don't have to explicitly say what it is, okay? Um, your details should be concrete and specific, but there shouldn't be too many details, okay? Uh, don't, be ob don't feel obliged um, to include every detail because that's just gonna make your writing chaotic, and for the reader, it's gonna make your writing boring. You wanna, you wanna make, the important details very clear and describe them thoroughly, but only the important ones. So choosing on what you pick to describe and what you choose not to pick to describe will affect um, the impression that you make for your reader. So for instance, they didn't talk about the fact that it looks like it's a sunny day. It doesn't talk about that it looks like there's water here um, outside the window. Uh, it, none, nothing outside the building was described. They only described um, what was inside. Uh, with your details, be very concrete and specific. Don't say that there were flowers, but say that there were roses or tulips or dandelions. Don't say um, that that's um, a pretty purse, but you can say it's bedazzled or that it's glossy or that um, you don't say your room is pretty, but you could say your room is immaculate. Okay. And then finally, I uh, don't just say that they had a dog, but you can say it's a golden retriever and if, or you can say it's a golden retriever puppy. So it's a completely different image in your mind, depending on what you say. All right. So descriptive writing, whether you plan uh, to write a personal subjective account or an analytic, which is more rigorous, more formal, given account. Uh, reading other descriptive essays will help guide you to success, and so we're going to do some reading of some descriptive essays tomorrow. Um, a descriptive essay will invite the reader to imagine um, uh, they experience whatever's going on with the text. It contains sensory and figured language. Sensory language, of course, five senses. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you touch? What do you taste? What do you smell? So it's a type of writing that describes something. A descriptive text should describe something that the writer has experienced or knows about with sufficient detail to communicate that subject to a reader. So uh, if, if I feel like I've seen what you're writing about, if I feel like I've experienced what you're writing about, then your writing, uh, your description has been successful. So um, usually you don't have descriptive writing just for the point of descriptive writing, okay? You use it um, in the midst of other writing. So in your narratives that you wrote um, over the weekend, you should have had at least some sections of descriptive writing within your narrative, okay? Um, so 
it, it gives a break. So you, if you were writing a research paper, you might have a moment within your research paper uh, where you did something descriptively and it kind of gives it a break. Okay. Um, if when you're writing an argument, you uh, say you're writing an argument um, about, uh, uh, you could write an, an, writing an argument about why dogs are a better pet than a cat. And then you could do, you could break into a personal experience of what it's like for you to go home and have your dog meet you at the door with a wagging tail and, and being happy to see you. And then your cat ignoring you and acting like they don't even care that you came home. So you could kind of use that personal experience, okay, and be very descriptive about it to strengthen your argument. Uh, you want to be careful when you're sharing your personal experience. If you're too personal, you might seem silly or over dramatic. But if you're too impersonal, you get boring. So the art of descriptive text is getting the balance between the two. All right, so personal is subjective, analytic is objective. So we're going to talk about the two different approaches. So a subjective writing is very much like a narrative essay. Okay, um, so you talk about your feelings, your response to things. Uh, this can be engaging for empathic readers, but it can be vague and disorganized. So some people love to read diction. Other people like to write, read. Uh, some people love to read fiction. Other people love to read nonfiction. Maybe you like all the emotions of fiction. Maybe you would prefer to have the facts and the knowledge of the nonfiction. What do you prefer? Okay. Um, so to write a successful personal essay, you need to focus and, and relate only the aspects that most fully express your experience. Um, they also benefit from a lot of vivid, evocative language. Uh, talking about vivid, evocative language, um, when you're doing descriptive writing, you don't necessarily want to use a $5 word if a 10 cent word will work. So think about who your readers are, okay? Um, if your readers aren't going to know the meaning of the $5 word, then you're actually hurting yourself. So uh, make sure that, think about who your readers are, and you do want to use language that they'll understand. If they don't understand the language, like maybe you're talking about skateboarders and you're using some skateboarding slang, and your reader doesn't skateboard, then you might need to explain some of that skateboarding jargon. Okay, so personal essays example. So you could talk about, you could describe a long nature hot, uh, not, not, uh, you could experience, talk about the experience of going to Saunders Springs or when you went to the Grand Canyon, something about nature. Um, you could describe your favorite sport, what gives some good sensory details of playing football, playing basketball, uh, playing Fortnite. OK, so really give a lot of details and explanation. Uh, you could reflect on your birthday. You could um, talk about your birthday party or birthday surprise. You could reflect on um, the fact that you're getting older or that that you're not you're, you're becoming an adult and you're about to be uh, 18 or you just turned 18. OK, or you could talk about things that shaped you in the past. You could uh, write descriptively about your parents, about your grandparents, about a conversation that you had. Um, that was meaningful. Now, objective writing, anal analytic, I know there's no D there, but you pronounce one. Analytic essays are formal. They're very much like writing an argument. Your goal is to communicate a set of key points. Rather than actually making an argument, you're describing something in detail, and you're going to create a clear structure of that subject. So you're not going to focus on the writer's experience. You're focusing on the information, different categories of information to give the fullest possible portrait. It can be engaging, especially if the reader is curious about what you're describing. Um, but if you do it wrong, it can be kind of stilted and boring. So you might write descriptively about a place. So you could break it down into the geography, the climate, the politics, the region, and the culture. So uh, kind of like if you went to Wikipedia and, and you uh, typed in China, it might describe the geography, the climate, the politics, the religion, and the culture of China. Okay. Um, exploring a historical event chronologically. Okay. So if you're going to write a whole essay, you know, about something that happened historically, then you might go into descriptive details about what happened. So think about a history book. Okay. A news story with a summary of the, 
a news story with a summary of an event, okay? Um, talking about the people involved, the information about what happened, okay? So that could also be an analytic type essay. All right, so I wanna show you real quick an example of the, uh, two, the same subject written about two different ways. So a storm at sea, uh, it's, this is a subjective account written by Charles Dickens. Imagine the ship herself with every pulse and artery of her huge body swollen and bursting, sworn to go on and die. Imagine the wind howling, the sea roaring, the rain beating, all in furious array against her. Picture the sky both dark and wild and the clouds in fearful sympathy with the waves making another ocean in the air. Add to all this the clattering on deck and down below, the tread of hurried feet, the, the loud hoarse shouts of the seamen, the gurgling in and out of water through the scupper, scuppers with every now and then the striking of a heavy sea upon the planks above with a deep, dead, heavy sound of thunder heard within a vault. So that's a pretty clear picture of a storm at sea. What would you say is the dominant impression? Fear, violence, awe, chaos. What's the dominant impression from Charles Dickens? Now here's the same storm at sea reported objectively from the captain. At 600 hours, watch reported a wind from due north of 70 knots. White caps were noticed in height, two L's above the bow. Below deck water was reported to have entered the bilge. So um, we know what time it is, 70 knots is pretty strong wind. Uh, white caps are large waves that are breaking and they're breaking um, two L's, whatever L means. I tried to look it up and I couldn't find it um, above the bow. So the bow, so, so two something, two feet, two yards, I don't know what L's are above the bow. So water is coming over the front of the ship. Below deck, water was reported to have entered the bilge. Well, if you're in a ship and there's water inside the ship, what kind of situation are you in? So both of them are talking about a bad storm. Both of them are pretty dire, but the captain is very objective. Charles Dickens was very subjective. All right, so I hope this kind of helps you get the idea of descriptive writing. Um, I have an article um, attached to this classroom uh, that tells you a little bit more about descriptive writing, and then I will do some more uh, with descriptive writing tomorrow. Have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow.